Hello. Hi. Um, we are so excited that you're joining us for our October 30th um, Strategizing Your Scenes webcast. We've just got two days to NaNoWriMo. I know this is gonna, I know that's like, I just said it and I was like, is that true? We have two days to NaNoWriMo, but somehow this has happened. And so I'm really excited that we are gonna take some time today together to remember how to write, <laughs> shall we say. Um, I'm gonna introduce myself. I'm Mariah, I'm the director of the Young Writers Program at NaNoWriMo. This is I am Nina. I am the program's intern at uh, NaNoWriMo HQ. Um, and we've got a special guest who I'll introduce in a second. Um, I wanted to say first though, if you don't know us, NaNoWriMo is an organization. We help people around the world write the first drafts of novels um, in just one month. And the, our big event is November. So if you haven't announced your novel yet on the NaNoWriMo site, um, you should do that now. So we've, we've included the link. Well, not now. You should do it in an hour. <laughs> you should keep, you should stay here with us for now. But in an hour, you should check that link in the description of this video and start your project or announce it. You can't actually start writing it until November. Um, if you're under 18, you can start a project on the Young Writers Program site. So that's also linked in our description of this video. And I'm the director of that program and it's really fun and you should definitely do it. Young writers get to set their own goals and use a lot of our um, really fun tools. Okay, oh, and here's our obligatory, obligatory plug to subscribe to our channel. We have to say it. Oh, we don't have to, but we'd love if you subscribed because then you get updates um, and we get to see you regularly. And I think to do that, you click the Viking helmet. It's either under me or under Nina. We can't see it, but you can. Uh, that was a lot. Oh, I'm gonna, I have two more notes to say. So this is a webcast about strategizing scenes. Um, we hope you'll leave with the tools to write a ton of scenes and a ton of words in November. We'll have time to listen to our special guests. We'll have time to write, um, and we'll also have time to share. So that's what you can look forward to. Um, and if you want to now, you could drop in the chat. I saw some people already did, but drop in where you're joining us from. We're in Berkeley, California. Um, and what genre are you writing this year? I'm writing kind of historical fiction, but yeah, what are you writing this year? What genre? I don't know what mine would fit under. I guess like somewhere between mystery and like rom-com. I love that. I love wherever that intersection is. That's what I want to read. <laughs> um, and so while you're doing that, I want to introduce our workshop leader, our special guest, Naomi Kinson, who is executive director of the Society of Young Inklings. Naomi, thank you for joining us. And I'll pass it on to you. Hello there. So I'm Naomi Kinson, and I'm the author of the From Sadie Sketchbook series. And I'm also, as you said, the executive director of Society of Young Inklings. And our organization is here to pair youth writers with adult authors and professional writers to help them move the big ideas from their hearts and heads onto the page. And we often do that with acting exercises or improv exercises, which we're going to be doing a little bit of today. And I just want to point out that play is not just for kids. It's something that's good for all of us. So we will all be able to kind of get into that drafting mindset that we need during NaNoWriMo through tapping into this type of thinking together today. Cool. Um, before we started, I just wanted to share a couple of the responses we're seeing in the chat. Someone pointed out to me that what, it might be two days for us until November in Berkeley, but for them, it's actually one day. So right. like, good luck. I hope this really helps you get a lot done. Um, and we have people joining us from all over, from Orlando, Florida, writing women's fiction. We've got, uh, let's see, Crazy Foxy is writing young adults. Um, oh, someone's joining from Bloomington, Indiana. Drew Schrader writing a fantasy adventure. I'm from Michigan City, Indiana. Up north. Um, <clears throat> Sarah Mowers from Michigan writing literary fiction. We've got Asheville, North Carolina writing sci-fi. So, uh, Holly Bone is watching from Taupo, New Zealand. Welcome. Mm -hmm. We've got Kelsey from Thunder Bay, Ontario, who's writing fanfic. Nice. And Tamar Cunningham from Beach Park, Illinois, writing a mystery adventure story. Also something I would read. I'm, yeah. I'm always up for a good mystery. I right. don't know how to write them, but I would I love I'm, I'd love to read yours. Love to to read yours. And someone asked us to introduce the new Ozara or no. What? 
Or maybe there's a conversation I'm not following. Someone's saying, who's the new green meanie? He's cute. And I thought maybe you were talking about our new, can you see him? Our new green meanie. This is our, this is Blobby. He's kind of our unofficial mascot. And then this, we haven't named this one. Oh God. Oh, no. <laughs> we haven't named, he's my, he's made of fluff. Uh, we haven't introduced this, this one yet because we don't know what their name is. So maybe you can help us come up with one, but later, because now we're, we're focusing. We got to focus. We don't have time for this, this green mini right now. We're writers. We've got two days to write, one day to write. Okay, we're to get ready to write. All right, I'm gonna pass it back to you. Naomi, I'm excited to write with you. We are going to have fun today. So um, we're about to play a game. It's kind of a warm up game and it is all about making quick choices. And I think this is one of the things that we can actually learn as writers from actors, because one of the things you have to do in improv is make a variety of very quick decisions. And the decisions I'm going to give you right now are going to force you to make some choices that might bring up some friction. So for instance, you might think, I don't have that in my world, or, well, my answer to that question depends. And those thoughts that are coming up in your mind are actually very helpful in this game. They're the things that will tell you important details about your character. So if you find that friction happening, make note of some ideas that pop to mind because those things may give you ideas for your characters. So we're playing this game to kind of warm up and get ready and then we'll move into a scene. So I'm gonna share my screen here. And sorry about that. Let's go to the first. Okay, so this is a continuum. And what I want you to do, if you have a piece of paper, you can draw a line if you want. You're gonna think about if your character was given the opportunity to publicly speak, would they say absolutely or no way, or would they be somewhere in between? Go ahead and figure out where you are on that timeline or continuum. And then we'll move on to the next. So the next one is ice skating. And I can see how in some worlds, this may not actually show up, but think about what would be the equivalent in your world if this is not something that would happen in yours. So would your character say, absolutely, they'd love to go out on the ice or absolutely no way. Next up, saying I love you. Is this an absolutely? or a no way for your character. Next up, writing an essay, absolutely or no way. Admitting I am wrong. How does your character feel about this? We have three more. First, confronting an authority, absolutely or no way. Babysitting, absolutely or no way. And finally, visiting the dentist. Now, I want you just to take a second and look back over what you've said. You might have had some ideas for scenes even as we went through those choices. And I want you just to note anything that you realized afresh or remembered about your character's strengths, weaknesses, thought patterns, and habits. So what is it that they might feel or think here? How long should we, should we write? Just a minute? Yeah, just take a minute and then I'll hop back on screen and give you uh, the next prompt. Got it.
Okay, so whenever you guys are ready, we can talk a little bit about the first scene that we're going to visualize. And here's what we're gonna do. So when we're doing those first scenes in our book, we're thinking about who's my character and how can I show that to my reader? And so I often am thinking about how do I put those strengths and weaknesses, their personality in general into action in the scene? And I sometimes will step back and I'll think from a director's point of view and I'll think, how can I put this character into specific action in some way. So we're gonna go through a quick exercise that will help you to visualize your character in action in an early scene in your novel. You might be far along in your planning process and you might already know some scenes that are coming up, so you might already have a setting. Or if you don't yet have any ideas about where your character might be in the early scenes of your novel, just think about one possible place. And we're going to do a thought experiment put our character in that space and to think about what might happen to show their strengths and potentially a weakness. Um, as we play this game, if you are so inclined, you can stand up and move around. When actors actually move their bodies, they tap into an emotional intuition that helps them to better understand kind of how their character feels. But of course, you can also just close your eyes and you can visualize in your mind. Just be aware that you're going to be more in your head if you're sitting down. So really think about your emotion too as you go through this, okay? All right, let me take you through this next exercise. We can, if you can share my screen for me. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to visualize the scene. I have some images here. Don't be distracted by them. If you want to look at them, they might give you some ideas, but if not, don't worry about them. The first thing I want you to think about is what's above you and what's below you and what's on all four sides of you in this setting. So this is, sorry, clarifying question. This is like, I'm going to think, so I have my novel mm -hmm. and I'm thinking of a scene for me. I, I'm going to picture kind of the beginning Yep. Some place in the beginning because that's where I'm that's where I'm starting from. <laughs> and but it doesn't it isn't maybe the first scene. Does it matter which scene I pick? It can be kind of like any one that pops into my head. Yeah, what's most important is that it's a scene where you will be able to show your character strengths and weaknesses. Got it. So like when I was doing this exercise, I was realizing that she probably has never gone ice skating and would be really scared too, but would also kind of want to show off. Okay. So I was thinking that would be that's kind of an interesting tension there. So I might start there. And so then what I'm thinking of is, is her kind of next to the pond and trying to put myself in her, sh her shoes in that moment. Exactly. So okay. you're thinking right now, what is it snowing? Is it, you know, what you're thinking about a pond. So that's a different kind of ice skating than say, you know, at a public place. So you're just kind of getting a feel of the setting. Got it. Okay. Okay. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you for the clarify the clarification. So here we are, we are in the setting. We're thinking about what's above us, what's below us, what are the major things that we can see around us. And we're also thinking about what we might hear or any other important elements of sensory detail. And the next thing to do is to put your character into some kind of physical action. So if they were in a kitchen, you could be having them chop onions. If they're in a gym, they might be organizing the gear. If they're at an ice skating rink then or at a pond, they might be ice skating. But you want to get their body in motion because this will help you to show their emotions and their actions, their reactions. That's so interesting because I do realize that I have the tendency when I start scenes to make them just like, they're just like these little stick figures standing there and then they're very passive versus mm -hmm. like something that they're starting with something they're actually doing. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I need a second though to think about what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. So sometimes if you're in a space, it's, it's helpful to think about the props that you might give them if they were actors. So, yeah. um, so what would you put in their hands? Yeah, that's interesting. Right. Okay. okay. So you've got them in motion and then, sorry, I don't know when I, Keeps doing this. Um, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to think about anything that might add to the tone of the scene. So you know what you're trying to show about your character in this scene. You might want to add a certain kind of weather, 
you might want to add um, someone who's walking by and watching them carefully to amplify their nervousness or something that you can add to the scene that will just take it to the next level. And then we have to figure out what starts the scene. So your character's in motion, but now something makes the scene begin. What makes the action of the scene begin? Sometimes this can be someone showing up. Sometimes it can be an event. Sometimes it can be a surprise, but something happens that pushes the scene into actual momentum. And your character will react in some way. And as you sort of play that out in your mind, I want you to allow there to be a surprise. What's something that could show up in the scene that you hadn't planned so far that could surprise you and your character? And ideally, this would be an opportunity for them to show off a strength or a weakness or both. All right, so we're actually gonna take a minute to write this scene. And I'm gonna put up an image where you can just take some time. Mariah, should we take about five minutes? Yeah, I think that sounds great. So I have like on my computer screen, I have notes as I was kind of like taking notes as you were talking. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna kind of put those all together and start with her. I'm gonna write the scene where she, my character is woman, is in motion doing this thing and kind of trying to move move from that point to that surprise that you talked about. And I might not get there, but like, I'm gonna start writing it in these five minutes. Is that right? Perfect, yes. Okay. Um, great, I'll just put I'll set my timer for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And just like we always say, this when we do virtual write-ins, this is a webcast, but anytime you're writing, if the prompt is working for you, like use it and write. If the prompt is not working for you, then just use these five minutes as five minutes when you're getting to write with a bunch of other writers, which is always a fun experience. Um, okay, timer's ready. Ready, set? Ready, Are we set. Ready? ready? Okay, go.
Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so that is time. That was five minutes. That went by really fast somehow. Um, you can finish the last thing you're working on, whatever it is. And maybe if you'd like to, you could take a minute to drop either your word count or uh, maybe a sentence from what you just wrote or even just something that you realized as you were writing into the chat. Um, and we can take a minute to discuss too. Um, as I was looking at this, I saw in the chat, someone said, can we act this out? I'm guessing we can also act it out instead of writing it. <laughs> and I love that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. No, yeah. Um, I keep thinking to myself that I should take an acting class because I think that, it, that all these things you're talking about, like what props would you include in the space is, is so, would help me be such a, maybe more of like an active writer. Um, one thing that I was realizing was, as I was writing, was how much I make, I like struggle to make the main character have characteristics that are very different from my own. You know, like my instinct is to always have them do the, the thing that I would do. Mm -hmm. And it's like an active struggle for me to to try to make this person her own person mm -hmm. um, without leaning into kind of like big stereotypes, like, not stereotypes, but like without making like making small differences rather than these big things. Mm -hmm. um, did you write anything or realize anything you'd like to share? So I actually completely just made up a... Um, scene where my character uh, finds out that she's pregnant. <laughs> what? Um, and, you know, in doing so, because generally the character, the, at least the narrator of my story, is a very, like, straightforward, um, very, like, conservative person, and she doesn't necessarily, like, emote that well, or at least she's, like, very much the strong-willed type of person who is very authoritative and intimidating and doesn't really like say you know yes very often and her knows me no kind of thing mm -hmm. and in writing this scenario you know I, I just took time in kind of weakening her a little bit hmm. and so she's like terrified of being in the doctor's office apparently Aww. so she's like in the beginning of the scene she's like sitting there like tapping her foot aggressively on the little That's step cool. ladder underneath her and like tearing away at the seat that's underneath love that so that's such a good like that's exactly what what you were talking about naomi yeah yeah i love that you gave you gave your character that physical activity and also she's grounded in her space by the way that she is interacting with the seat and you know everything that's that's great fantastic thanks um i'm going to share a couple from the chat taryn says this scene was my introduction to two of my characters as they are completely underprepared for an attack on their ship it's just them yelling at each other and it really shows their strengths and weaknesses which is really cool yeah um, the Mary said, she gave us a quote from her, what she wrote. She said, she had a dream of a warm light rising like reverse drowning, and she startled awake, panting. The daylights are off, signalizing that it still has, still the time for sleep for the inner circles. I'm, I'm feeling like some kind of dystopian sci-fi kind of thing out of that, which I really love. Mm -hmm. um, Brooklyn K wrote, run, Boaz yelled as he stumbled out of the secret room from under his bedroom floorboards and down the hallway. She's coming. Bum, bum, bum. Um, love that. Let me see if I can find another one that we haven't heard from that much. Oh, Andrea Moore gave us kind of a tip. She said, I spoke my ideas into a voice recorder app on my phone. It helped me to get my ideas out faster and brainstorm easier. Hmm. Um, that's another really cool. I feel like we're tapping into kind of different modalities, like writing is one part of your brain, handwriting is another, but also things like acting out or like talking, I think are different. Yeah. Give you different access to different things too. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, shall we move on to the yes. Let me make sure we have time to do to to keep writing. So okay. Um, one of the things that I think is really uh, wonderful, especially about you know speaking into a voice recorder or just the various ways that we're approaching this, is that I think it's helpful, especially when we're drafting, to really be in that mind space of what's possible, as opposed to being you know many of us have studied writing craft in a variety of ways, and so we're sort of running our ideas through a mental checklist of does this work, does that work, and all of that. And especially when we're in this, I'm getting my first scene out kind of mode, 
or you know, when we're drafting a first draft of something, I think it's so helpful to just get into that different kind of brain space that sets that critical part of ourselves aside. And so we're gonna do, the next scene is going to actually be a thought experiment where I'm gonna stretch you to think about your scene in a new way. And the reason I'm doing this is because often in an acting class, we would run through the scene, we would put it in a totally different kind of setting. We'd have the actors move in a completely different kind of way because sometimes they will discover a new emotion. And you may decide that you love this experiment and you want to, to try writing the scene in a completely different way. Or you may discover something through this experiment that allows you to actually add more to what you had already started. So for right now, sort of suspend disbelief and try something completely different, okay? All right. So if we can share my screen, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to choose a completely opposite setting. So if you were inside for the scene that you just were writing, I want you to think about an outside, an outdoor scene. Or if you were in a really quiet space, think about a noisy space. So just try to stretch it to its opposite in as many ways as you can think of. Okay. Down to like the same. So like if your character was in a position of like weakness or nervousness, would you flip that as well? Like put them in like a really? You certainly could. If you feel like you wanna have the same kind of event, maybe you want to show your character's physical weakness, but you wanna do it in a totally different kind of setting, you mm -hmm. could do that. But yeah, absolutely. If you wanna take it to, now I'm gonna show the opposite side of my character's personality, you can do that as well. Correct. Okay. So play with opposites, however that seems to appeal to you at this moment. And the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to do that exercise of looking all around you. So think about what's above you and what's below you and what's on all four sides of you. And the most important thing is just thinking about what draws your attention. So what do you see that draws your attention? What do you hear? Are there any smells that draw your attention? Now, before we start into this scene, I want you to actually give your character a little extra something that you may not have had for the last scene. So maybe your character has a secret that they're taking into the scene and there's someone they'll see in the scene that they don't want to have find the secret out. Or maybe something happened just before this moment or is about to happen right after and they know it's coming and you have this sort of extra tension that you're adding into what's about to happen for your character. And I want you to go ahead and take what you know, and I want you to give them a new physical action. And the more sensory it can be, the better. So I have painting here on the screen, but just think about something that they can do, that they can feel with their body, that they can smell, even if they can hear it, that would be great. And if you're acting this out, you can be sort of moving through this motion with your body. Now go ahead and add a character to the scene. So this might be somebody that you already used in the other scene, or it might be someone new who shows up, who adds a complication to what's happening for your character. And let your character react and start to sort of build through the action of the scene again in your mind. What action does your character take? What's the reaction? And how did it build? So just to summarize, we put our character in a new place. Yep. Gave them kind of a new secret or a new like a new thing that they're thinking about. Yep. And gave them a new physical action. Yep. And maybe added a new character as well. Or like a new um a new challenge. A new challenge. Okay, sorry. A new challenge. And this is also this could also be at the beginning of our of our story. So we're just kind of picking picking a moment and using this. Just clarifying. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you're you're picking up very... Oh, go ahead. Oh, so you're you're again showing their strengths and their weaknesses, or a specific strength and a specific weakness. Got it. Yeah. Um, and sometimes for me, I don't know if this is true for other viewers, but it's really hard to switch in the middle of something. Mm -hmm. Like if I get my head into a certain scene, I don't want to stop. I want to keep going. Yeah. So if that's you, uh, you can be a rebel with us mm -hmm. or with me and 
and like maybe just keep writing that scene that you were writing before. But I, I also think even if I'm even if I might do that, I'm just sharing my I'm sharing my dirty laundry with you. I might continue doing the scene that I started, but um, but I might try to use some of these ideas as well, like somehow move them to a different place in that same scene or add in a new action or, or a new challenge to incorporate it as well. Absolutely. Okay, good. Thanks for not being like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've told people whenever I do virtual write-ins, I'm always like, I'm going to give you a prompt and I'm probably not going to do it because <laughs> I know what works for me. And I, I kind of, sometimes it's, it's fun to try something that feels weird at first, though you can learn new things. Um, cool. Okay. Um, and somebody in the chat says, I can't make it at the beginning. Um, and I'm, I don't know if they're talking about the beginning of their story, but if you, you can pick a scene at any point in your novel, too. The point is to practice these skills. It's not to, um, you don't have to exactly follow that beginning direction. And I also think that at the beginning of writing any novel, part of what you're trying to do is hear your character or see them in motion. And so even it's, it's a value to put your character in a certain kind of motion and maybe not even include that in your actual novel, but you're seeing how would my character react when they're faced with the ice skating pond? Because now you know something new about your character that you will be able to take into the rest of what you write. Cool. Yeah, that's very true. Okay, great. Okay. So um, are we going to write for a little bit? Yeah, I think if we wanted to, let's see, 135. Let's, we wanted to write for a little longer. Let's do eight minutes maybe this time. Okay. Um, so we can do eight minutes of writing. Uh, you can, new character, or not new character, move your character to a new place, a new secret, a new physical action they're doing, a new challenge they're facing. You can keep working on the scene that you were working on before. Um, you can write something totally different. The point is to write. So don't don't be checking Facebook. We'll know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready, set, eight minutes, go.
bum, 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 bum. That's a nice little chime. It is. I thought about changing it, but I can't. I just like it too much. Okay, so that was eight minutes, which someone said in the ch the chat is a weird number, but it's my favorite number. So, but I do get it's <laughs> maybe a weird amount to write. Um, go ahead and finish up. And if you want to drop in the chat, you could drop in either how many words you wrote, or you could drop in a sentence that you wrote, or um, yeah, how that went for you, basically. Um, I kind of kept writing the, because the five minutes on the first scene that I was writing wasn't quite enough for me. So, because five minutes, you know, it's just, you get kind of your toes in the water. So I kind of kept working on that a little bit, but I also had in the back of my head, like the idea of, of introducing something new or, or switching the tone, like, like um, when you said earlier about having something to match the tone of what you want the, or the mood that you want to be, like I had it, the idea of like, this is a classic movie thing, but you know, when like the sky changes from blue to gray or like when the, I just watched Harry Potter and the order of the Phoenix mm -hmm. and like the movie starts and it's like on a playground and it's, it's like kind of sunny. And then all of a sudden the sky just like gray is over in the way it sometimes mm -hmm. does before a storm yeah. and the whole mood just shifts really yeah. dramatically. Um, and I, I like the idea of doing that with the scene that I'm working on too. Um, how did, how did that go for you? Um, it went really well. I just uh, added on to, my uh, previous writing scenario so I'm getting to the uh, part where they start talking about um, the results and everything and where she finds out that she's pregnant so <laughs> I'm like kind of delving into that a little bit more I'm, like the backstory of them wanting children and stuff that's so, cool yeah. um, people are dropping in the chat by Mary says I'm still trying to get a grasp around my character I created her just last night after a Pinterest binge <laughs> um, I've done that. I have so many Pinterest pages bookmarked on my computer mm -hmm. and I'm always like, go back and look at this. But <laughs> I don't, I like, I always forget to go back. Um, let's see. <laughs> Lauren Fouch says, here's a good line. So like any undignified person, I walked off as quick as possible before slipping in a pile of Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> um, let me see. Oh, this is interesting. Sarah W. I think was really thinking about sensory details. And mm -hmm. she said, the smell of spongy cinnamon buns and floor cleaner filled James's nose. The carpet of the car showroom left scratchy indents in his arms and the side of his cheeks. The wolves above him laughed. I do not know if they mean actual wolves, but or like creepy wolf people, but. Um, but either way, that's still really intense and cool. I like it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, let me see. There's another one. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, oh, this is interesting. Zara Wright says she wrote 263 words and she said her, my main character is now telling um, his boyfriend his secret. I also wrote it like a script and the scene really flowed. So that's an interesting way to think about it too. Um, if you can switch back and forth. And if, if you're doing that, I saw someone's comment earlier. They said, I'm writing in first person, but then in the middle, it's switching into third person. And I think in a first draft, like if you're switching p perspectives, if you're switching like from writing a novel style to writing script style, like all of that is totally fine. Yeah. Like it's just about like what you said, Naomi, like getting to know your characters, getting words on a page. Um, I'm writing a first draft of something and it has switched so many times, not only the POV, but also who I'm following as the main character, even though that's not what I mean for it to do. So mm -hmm. oh, it's a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, we've got about 12 minutes left. I'd love to fit in maybe another writing session, so I'll pass it back to you. Okay, great. So um, I know that people are really into their scenes, and so many of you may continue to want to write the same scene, but we're going to do a quick uh, brainstorming now to think about some other settings that could be in your novel. So you may use these now, or you might use them later. Um, the reason for this is because I think that often when our stories start, or at least when I start a story in my own mind, I sort of, I see the setting as something that's pretty familiar or what I'm expecting. But I don't often think about all the other places where a scene could take place. So if a character needs to discover something or if they need to get in an argument with someone or, um, you know, magic needs to show up, 
it could show up in their bedroom or in their school classroom or you know around the kitchen table but it could also show up in a place that they aren't usually like at Macy's or you know at the bowling alley or something else that's completely unexpected and sometimes those unexpected ideas don't come first to mind but they're fun to just think about so um, if you're writing on a document you may want to grab another piece of paper or you might want to just have a separate section where we can make a quick list we're going to brainstorm some different kinds of settings that could be in the world of your story and then if we have time we'll do a little writing in one of those settings or of course you can continue the one that you have so the first type of setting I want you to consider, and I can share my screen here, is um, anything that's for entertainment. So I have a bowling alley here, but you can think about um, any theaters that might be in the world of your story, sporting arenas, places that people go to have fun. They, there could be a go-kart place, mini golf, anything that could be a little bit fun. If you're in a magical world, you can think about the types of magical entertainment that might be. All right, I know you probably have more ideas, but I'm going to move on to the next thing. You can always come back and come up with more. The next are uh, public buildings. So thinking about uh, post offices, courtrooms, the DMV, those kinds of places where what are the what are the public buildings that your character might end up finding themselves in? All right, and the next category, what about places of learning? So you could think about libraries, particular kinds of classrooms your character might find themselves in if they take some sort of enrichment class. Maybe there's an art studio or a music studio. There might be a training gym where they learn to use a certain power. Okay, and the next one, places like stores or restaurants. So places where they might have a high-end meal or fast food or maybe a corner shop. You could think about stores as well, like an independent store or a major corporation or a street fair. This is where they would shop or eat. Okay, so um, before I take you through the visualization, I want to hop back on screen for just a second so I can see how you did so far. Did you come up with some good ideas? Um, I, my, so my story is set in 1910, mm -hmm. and I, lo I actually really love these questions because it's, it's hard, like it's, and I, I guess also if you're writing a sci-fi or a fantasy, any mm -hmm. anything where the world is very different, like you, I think you have to be very conscious about thinking about where they'll be. Cause like, I was like grocery store. And then I was like, wait, really? This, what kind of grocery stores were there? And then I wrote general store and I was remembering this museum I went to and visualizing like the post office and the courthouse, but how those places would look in 1910 is very like, a, like a, um, oh my gosh, what are they called? The, like the pharmacy with the soda fountains. And so this was really interesting thinking about the day to day and different places to move them for me. Yeah. And this goes back to that idea of props, right? So if they're in the pharmacy and they're at a soda fountain, they're going to have a different kind of thing they can interact with and you have different kinds of people you can move into the setting. And I feel like playing around with scenes like this for me, especially through improv as a first draft, allows me to be really flexible with my writing so that I don't feel like, oh, well, I wrote the whole scene. I don't want to change it now. I've had the opportunity to, you know, I put it here and I put it there and I tried this and I try that and then I move yeah. this and actually write it. That's interesting. Yeah. So um, if you would like, you can think about one of the settings that you just imagined. 
then you can think about actually transposing the scene that you just wrote and putting it into one of those settings. So just for a thought experiment, we can let people do this, but we probably don't have enough time for everybody to write it. So I'm, I would love for you to choose something that's on your list, Mariah and Nina, and see if you can think about if you were to, if you were to move your scene, if you had to show the same kind of thing for your character, like show it in a different setting. Mm -hmm. How might how else might you do it? That's so interesting. Oh. Like like I'm thinking, and I think we could take five minutes to write, and it's okay if we go okay. one minute over, two minutes over. But I'm thinking like the ice skating thing with her, and this desire to show off, and then the danger that comes from that. And then I, one of the things I wrote in my notes was like a stage, like a theater stage, and oh, thinking yeah. about how to like how that could like it. Anyway, I'm what I mean to say is I have some ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. So we're gonna take the scene that we wrote and, and take like the same kind of content and learning that we got from it, but see how it would play out if we moved it to a different space. Yes. Um, and even if you're if you're writing, like you can write it as scene or if you're just like writing down ideas, I think that also works in these five minutes too. Mm -hmm. Just start. Cool. All right, five minutes. Ready, set, go.
Okay. Bling. Bling. Um, um. Uh oh. Okay. This thing is happening that sometimes happens where there was a bit of a delay. So we were hearing ourselves coming out of the speaker, which is always a disaster because it's impossible to talk while you're also listening to yourself talk. I think you guys just said it at the same time. Um, no, that was, kind of. that was me. I, <laughs> okay. I, it's happened before. Huh. I think. Um, okay, time's up. Go ahead and pause what you were writing. And it is two o'clock. We, we're going to do about an hour, but I'd love to just take a few minutes if you wanted to drop in the chat. Um, how that went for you, if you learned anything new, or if you wanted to drop in something that you were writing, um, even if that meant you were just writing the scene that you started, which is totally fine. Um, I'm really interested in, in, in this. I've never tried this before as an exercise. I think because I get stuck in one way where I'm like, she's at a pond, like it has to be at a pond. The idea that, that the goal is not to set something at the pond. The goal is to figure out something about this character so it, I can move it to a new a new place and have that same thing happen, I think is really interesting for me. Um, do you feel like, do you feel like you discovered something new about your character that you can then take back to the pond scene if you decide that the pond scene is what you would want to use? Um, one thing that's interesting about it is the pond scene would be kind of near the beginning when, when they're still with their family in like a safe space and the theater would be kind of in the middle when they're like out and about mm. in like a different part. So I'm wondering if I could even have them happen as reflex reflections of each other. You know what I mean? Like as a way to show growth or show change or show. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. I love that. Um, people are... Oh, Caitlin Graham said, she shared a couple sentences. She said, what have I created? Clara muttered, chaos. You've created chaos and it's all your fault. Like Nigel laughed out with a smirk. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Ew, what? Drew Schrader wrote, this chair, however, felt more like being chained to someone's liver than being chained to cheese. The chair was red, squishy, and weirdly wet. Ew. <laughs> That's really descriptive. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I want to read all of that, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's so strange. This one is Pink Cow is really leaning into having like actions happening. Mm -hmm. Emily was making a flower chain with Goldie while Red was pulling out blades of grass absentmindedly. Hansel glanced at me when Caleb pecked Lila on the cheek, but I pretended not to notice. <laughs> love that. I love um, that. So much is happening there. Cool. That's great. Yeah. Um, I don't want to keep people too long. I love seeing the things that people should. I honestly could just keep reading all these things in the chat all day because I love I love hearing other people's stories way more than I like writing my own story. <laughs> just so much more fun and easy. Um, but I guess we should probably wrap up. Um, Hannah Nicholson said, "We have had a great time. My son has written a great part of the scene, which is awesome. great. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. Um, Naomi, did you want to end with any any final words and then we'll just plug our site one more time? <laughs> yeah, of course. So um, I just wanted to say, you know, this is really, um, whatever strategies you can use to allow yourself to either write around the edges of your story or just to approach a scene from different angles, whether that's, you know, you don't want to write it down, but you want to imagine it in your mind, or you want to write it as a letter, or you want to write it like somebody said as a scene, an actual script, um, that can really help you to just see your scene in different lights and learn new things about your characters. And if you're interested in doing more of this kind of work, uh, whether you are a youth writer or an adult who likes to do this kind of what we call writerly play, you're welcome to come and check out more resources. We have some resources at the Young Inklings site. So it's younginklings.org slash NaNoWriMo if you want to check out some more about that. And um, just hope that everyone has a really amazing time drafting their novels this month. And we will make sure to drop that link into the description of our video. Oh, and I see that Catherine just dropped it into the chat, so it's there as well. Perfect. Thank and if, thank you so much for all that. And if you haven't, um, if you haven't started your project yet on NaNoWriMo, you can see that link in the description. If you're a writer who's under 18, you can come to the Young Writers Program site. Um, the main NaNoWriMo site, you just have to be 13 or older to participate. Mm -hmm. So if you were, let's say, 15, you could have an account at both sites. Um, that's totally fine. We have people who like the NaNoWriMo site, but also like the community of younger people on the, on the Young Writers Program site. Very cool. Thank you so much for leading us in this.
Of course. It's very helpful. I feel like a little less terrified about kind of dropping into November in one to two days from now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and I guess we should say bye. Yeah. I never want to end. Let's just, okay. <laughs> Let's just keep the camera rolling. <laughs> Forever. Um, just forever. We'll just be here. We'll just write through November. <laughs> we'll occasionally come through to talk to you. Someone you know, shall bring us food. Yep. We'll just like call down to the office like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I guess we should go. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.